Good morning, Living Hope. God bless you this morning. Happy Wednesday morning. And to my brothers and sisters in Iglesia Esperanza Viviante and the rest of the world, welcome. It's time for another edition of Living Hope Today. We've been trying to understand what it takes to be disciples of Jesus Christ. How did he train those who followed him in the New Testament? Because I know when we learn that, we're going to understand what he wants from us today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's going to keep his instruction the same for us, that we might follow him in similar ways. So, we looked at this question, what are the foundations of discipleship? And specifically, we want to know, how does Jesus train his disciples? We've watched Jesus call his disciples through the follow me. That's all he asked from them. Go where I go. Do what I tell you to do. I want your obedience. I want you to be with me. Let's go. His disciples said, okay, we'll leave everything we have. You'll be our highest priority in life. We'll follow you. He started teaching them in Matthew 5. That's where we've been for the last several weeks. He went through the Beatitudes. You can look that up. How insightful is that? The attitudes and characteristics that the followers of Jesus are demanded to display to the world. How we're the salt. How we're the light. We shouldn't let our light be hidden. He, he started talking about the law as he moved on in chapter 5 and, and how the Old Testament now is in full force in the New Testament. What laws apply, what laws don't apply. He's been actually taking us back to what the original intention of the lawgiver was. And okay, it kind of gets summed up for us when we get to verse 20 of the fifth chapter. In verse 20, he says, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> Just remember that the religious leadership of Jesus' day had decided they were acceptable to God because they were able to keep the rules. That somehow their behavior, their self-righteousness, was going to please God, and of course they believe themselves to be better than all the rest. And what does Jesus tell them? Look, he basically tells them through this section that our behavior can never make us righteous in God's sight. If, if you don't have more righteousness than these religious guys that think they're going to heaven, uh, you're, you're in trouble. You're never going to enter the kingdom of heaven. And so he says, this phrase over and over as he goes through various issues. He says, you have heard. And when he says that, he refers to the Old Testament, whatever was considered to be acceptable truth from the Old Testament. And then he says, but I say to you. He says it in verse 22, 28, 32, 34, 39, 44. I mean, he says it some six times. I say to you, Jesus is clarifying the Old Testament. He's bringing us to an understanding of what the original, the original intent of the scripture was. The people of his day had twisted it to think they were okay because they massaged it, dumbed it down to what they wanted it to mean, and they were thinking they were okay because they were doing the things that they thought it said. Jesus says, no, no, look, you guys think it's okay not to murder if you get mad at somebody, you're just like you've murdered them in your heart. You think it's okay if you don't commit adultery. Well, even if you think sexual lustful thoughts for someone else, you're guilty. You think it's okay to just divorce somebody by giving them a piece of paper. Well, God hates divorce. It's never been his intention to allow divorce. He does have exceptions, knowing that our sinful natures will cause divorce, but Divorce causes adultery. Yesterday we saw Jesus is interested in how we talk. That if we swear by this or swear by that, take these oaths as they did in the Old Testament, that that's really not necessary. He says, look, just let your yes be yes and your no be no. That's what he's after. And today, what does he tell us? Well, we start with that same kind of pattern. You have heard that it was said. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. 
And okay, this is Old Testament civil law. This is the law that says we should punish somebody in like manner as what they did. Okay, so look at this with me. In the Old Testament, there are several places, Exodus 21 and Deuteronomy 19, where you can read this as well, but I chose to show you Leviticus 24. If anyone injures his neighbor, as he has done it, shall be done to him. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, whatever injury he has given a person shall be given to him. This is civil law. This is how God instructs his society to run so that there is a just penalty for those that offend. It doesn't say that these things have happened by accident. It says that these things are basically caused by someone who wants to hurt someone else. Everybody knew it that listened to what Jesus said. The religious leaders were especially good at it. Let's punish that evildoer, you know, that heathen pagan reprobate that did the wrong thing. We're going to get him. Okay, now the modification. But I say to you. It's really not a modification. I misspoke. It's more like taking us back to the original intent. He says, do not resist the one who is evil. Oh, man. Just wait for this. This is going to get intense. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic... Let him have your cloak as well. Oh, man, really? And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles and give to the one who begs from you and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. Oh, man, what is he talking about? It sounds like this is the self-abuse chapter where we just become the doormats, where... Anybody who wants to run over us and wipe their feet on our lives, they're free to do it at any time and in any way. Well, when you get to a passage like this, we need to take a minute and try to really understand what exactly is being said here. First, we got to remember that Jesus began by bringing up the topic of civil law. Okay, that's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth in the Old Testament. But this is interpersonal relationship. This is not about what criminals deserve on a, on a public basis. This is not about what um, armies should do if attacked. This is about a personal response to injury or damage. Look at, well, let's break it down this way. In the Old Testament, the accepted standard when hurt or damaged by others was to retaliate in kind. Okay, we give them, we do to them what they did to us. Now Jesus says, I don't want you to resist the one who is evil. Okay, so he's telling us that the behaviors that are coming against us are evil behaviors. The person that's doing them are is doing what is forbidden by God, not acceptable, evil. And then he gives us four illustrations as we break this passage down. First, he says, if you're insulted. And, and you say, well, where did he talk about being insulted? He says, if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. You need to catch this. You see, in the ancient world, according to their standards, if I hit you with my backhand, I would hit you on your right cheek if I was right-handed, right? Bam! Okay, this was one of the highest grade insults possible in life. Jesus is not talking about if somebody criminally pummels you into the ground, you're just supposed to let them. This is about insulting somebody. If I insult you by smacking you across the face and humiliating you in public, Jesus is saying, don't resist the evil one. Don't hit them back. I mean, you know what happens when people take action against us. You know, you hit me, maybe I hit you back, but more than likely, 
I not only hit you back, I escalate whatever the violence was. You hit me, I hit you back, and maybe I kick you, <laughs> right? I mean, you've fought with your siblings before, haven't you? You've watched this in action where every step of the way in the conflict, it gets elevated a little bit more. It escalates a little higher until, you know, mom has to come in and start yelling at us all, right? This is the kind of thing Jesus is saying, look, don't escalate, don't retaliate, don't do back to them what they did to you when they are insulting you by hitting you on your right cheek. If they want to hit you like that in terms of the insult, well then go ahead, turn the other cheek. Let them hit that one too. In other words, abandon your personal pride and let the evil doer be evil. All right, well, okay, let's look at the second one. He says, but I say to you, if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. So if somebody sues you, he doesn't really say if there's grounds for that lawsuit or not. He says, give them more than the judgment calls for. Don't counter sue them. You're not in a place where you're going to retaliate legally against them. In fact, if you think about a tunic and a cloak, these were garments that were usually full-length garments in the ancient world. These were garments that you really needed, especially, you know, at night, you needed your cloak because it was cold. The desert gets cold at night. You you needed those things to survive. And Jesus says, look, when somebody's acting evilly against you, instead of worrying about your survival, trust God for that. If they want your cloak, give it to them. If they want your tunic, give it to them. Don't retaliate. Wow, that's pretty rough. The third illustration, do you remember? Jesus says, if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Now, <clears throat> you got to understand what this is about. In that ancient world, right, the Romans o occupied Palestine. And what would happen a lot is the Roman soldiers would come along and say, hey, you need to carry my gear for me. They would grab somebody off the street and make them carry their stuff. Uh, probably one of the best scriptural illustrations is Simon of Cyrene. Do you remember that guy? They grab him as Jesus is on his way to the cross and they say, hey, you carry this. And Simon carries part of the cross to the crucifixion of Christ. He is conscripted by the Roman guard to work that through. Well, Jesus says what? If somebody says to you, I want you to go a mile, then go the extra mile. Go with him two miles. Don't retaliate. Don't resist the one who is evil. And lastly, the fourth illustration Jesus has brought up is about exploitation. Right? He says, give to the one who begs from you and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. All right, that means we don't refuse or ignore the request. We respond to the request, perhaps even knowingly when somebody's trying to take advantage of us. Okay, so what do we do with all this? Well, I think it best if we just sit back from this and take a look at the principle that Jesus is bringing forward here. You know, the acceptable standard in his day was that you retaliate in kind. Everybody listening to him would have been obviously in touch with the idea that if somebody hits you, you hit them back, and hopefully you hit them harder. If somebody wants your money, you take theirs. If somebody says, says go the extra mile, you say, forget about it. I have my rights, and I'm not doing it. The principle Jesus is laying down here is that the followers of Jesus are called to decisively break the chain of retaliation whenever personally insulted, sued, imposed upon, or exploited. When treated with evil intent, we're called to trust God and to avoid retaliation. Wow, for some of us, that's absolutely revolutionary. But remember... Remember, well, let's go to Romans 12. This principle is stated well in Romans 12. Beloved, never avenge yourselves. Now, I'm, I want to be clear here. He's not telling us 
that the evildoer should never be punished, that the evildoer should never receive what's coming to him, that there should never be justice. No, all through Scripture, God demands justice. But he's telling us when we have that urge personally, after we've been personally insulted or imposed upon or exploited, when we have that urge to retaliate, don't retaliate. What does he say? Never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. Again, let's talk about it. God understands what's happening to us. Remember when they stoned Stephen? And in in the book of Acts, it says Jesus stands up at the right hand of God and watches this happen. Yeah, does Stephen receive insult? Yeah. What does he do? He prays for the forgiveness of those who are hurting him. When Jesus was on the cross after being beaten mercilessly and spit upon, what does he do? He prays for the forgiveness of those who have hurt him so desperately. What does Jesus call us as his followers to do? Hey, leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. You belong to Jesus Christ. You belong to him. When somebody hurts you, he's well aware, and he is himself feeling the pain on our behalf. He is going to settle the score on that day, and we're called to trust, to trust him. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, in other words, the one who hurts you wants to eat, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. We'll get to that tomorrow. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. There it is. Do you see 21? God's telling us, basically, don't stoop to their level. Don't respond with retaliation. Don't respond with evil when evil comes to you. Instead, overcome evil with good. Wow. We need the power of God to live as Jesus has called us to live. That's for sure. So today, as you walk through your Wednesday, wherever God takes you, I just trust that you will look at whatever anybody might do to you through the lens of overcoming evil with good. Even if it means you get insulted, even if it means you're imposed upon or, or in some way you're taken advantage of. Again, not, not in a full-blown legal capacity. God has rules for that. But just as a follower of Jesus, whatever may come to us, we need to serve him by overcoming evil with good. Again, I trust that You'll share this and like this with the people you might know. Just give it a click or two so other people can hear this. And I trust that this day you'll serve him well. God bless you.